high on the scrub and you're here for one reason. You know, for a library, they don't have the larger scope of books. I've been reading this one called So You Think You Can Mimic, The Ultimate Guide to Blue Magic. I found it in the limited section. Luckily, I've been traveling the run with these awesome new things called audiobooks. It's great for when I'm writing my chocobo and I need to focus on the path ahead. You should give one a try. No? Well, allow me to read you this new book I picked up just the other day. Time to learn about the Great Google Library hard. Simplified. Head down the ramp and pull the first group of mobs. Then continue up the next ramp until you get to the next group. Watch out for the Biblia later. It will have medium-sized conal AOEs. The one behind it is called Tail Drive and the one in front of it is untelegraphed called The Look. Just stay to the side of this enemy and you'll avoid both AOEs. Pull and kill everything while avoiding the AOEs as best you can. Follow the ramps and pull everything until you get to the next section of the library. The medium-sized circular AOE called Batter will give you a knockback with a stun if you're standing in it. The mobs will throw out other AOEs and small raid whites. Kill everything. First boss time. Triclip is a tank buster. Folio will create this purple AOE in the middle of the room. A book will fall on this area and give a small knockback. If you get hit by this book, it will give you a Volen stack. Just avoid the purple. The next time the boss casts the move Folio, it will also cast books at each end of the narrow arena. These will have a knockback if you get hit by it, but there is a safe zone in the middle of the arena. Fright for Aurora is a medium-sized point blank AOE around the boss that will give you a Volen stack if you get hit by it. The Folio cast after this will have four pairs of books spawned on the sides of the arena. These books will gap close towards each other and cause everyone caught in the AOE to get a Volen stack. The easiest way to dodge this is to stand where the last books will spawn in, normally a spot in the middle, and wait for the other books to gap close and dissipate so you can move into that area, which is now a safe zone. The boss will repeat mechanics from the second folly R1 woods until it has been defeated. Head down the stairs and around the corner to the right. Pick up the enemies and proceed through the corridor until you get to a section where fire will fall from the ceiling and engulf the corridor that you're trying to progress down. If you step into this fire, you'll be inflicted with an considerable burns debuff. Stop here and kill everything while avoiding the AoEs as best you can. The tank buster of the Bibliophagist, Grim Fate, is a cleave, so tanks need to make sure that this enemy is facing away from the rest of the group. After everything has been defeated, the fire will be extinguished. Head through the door to the left and pick up all of the enemies in the next room and the larger enemy through the doorway. Turn left and head down the stairs. As you continue down the path, you'll see several books on the ground. When you walk into the middle of both sets of books, the first one being a group of three and the next being a group of four, they will come to life and aggro you. Kill everything while avoiding the AoEs. When everything is being defeated, a larger book will fall from the ceiling with a beam sticking out of it. Walk over this book to be launched to the next area. Second boss time. This is a boss that will change form. First up is its human form. Searing Wind is a cleaving tank buster. Biblia Side is a roomwide AoE. Sea of Flames is a tracking AoE underneath party members. Just continue moving around the outside of the arena to dodge them. Slosh is a distance-based single target attack to a tethered player. The closer you are to the boss, the more damage this move will hit you for. The boss will then move to the middle of the room and change form into a tornado. If you have too much DPS, you might skip this phase entirely. It will create a donut and a small point blank AoE of fire around the arena. If you touch these areas, you'll get an insurable burn debuff. Magnets! How do they work? The boss will cast Pharaoh Fluid and put either a positive or negative charge on itself and all party members. If you have the same symbol, you'll be pushed away from the tornado, so you need to get close to it so you aren't pushed into the wall. If you have an opposite symbol, you'll be pulled towards the tornado, so you need to be far away from the tornado and as close as you can be towards the outer wall so you don't be pulled into the AoE in the middle. The boss will then change form into a hand. It will also perform the cleaving tank buster of searing wind. The boss will highlight circles on the ground. These circles will either be a sun or a moon. The boss will give all players one of these two symbols and a coin over their head and cast seal of night and day. You have to walk into and stay in the circle of whatever your symbol is until the cast finishes. If you don't make it into a circle in time or you go to the wrong symbol, you will get a Voln stack. The boss will turn back into the form of a human and only repeat the human form mechanics until it is defeated. Head out of the arena and turn left to go up the stairs to the next area. Pull the frogs in the next part of the library. Continue up the stairs to the next level while you see another frog with a number of statues behind it. When you pull that frog, the two statues on either side of it will come to life as mechano scribes. Then continue past the statues on the sides and the three back statues will come to life as mammoths. If any mammoths begin casting condensed Libra, they will give whoever they are targeting a Volen stack. The larger blue frogs can also cast large AoEs called Water 3, but these can be interrupted. When you have defeated one of the three mammoths from the back, the two mammoth statues on the side will come to life. After you have defeated those mammoths, the other four mammoth statues will come to life. When those mammoths have been defeated, the barrier to the next set of stairs will drop. As you reach the top of the stairs, a large book will spawn in and a behemoth will rise out of it. Page Tear is a cleaving tank buster. Magic Hammer is a large circular AoE. If you get hit by this, it will not only damage you, but it will also remove 5,000 MP. Bone Shaker is a room-wide AoE that will give everyone a Volen stack. It will normally only do this twice before you defeat it. After it's been defeated, head up the stairs and it's final boss time. On the Properties of Darkness is a simple tank buster. On the Properties of Darkness 2 is a room-wide AoE. The boss will cast the move Checkout, and every time it does this, it will spawn four books into the arena with small AoEs around them. On the Properties of Quakes will be cast that will affect anyone not levitating off the ground. All four books for this mechanic will spawn these pulsating white circles. These will give you the debuff of Levitate. If you aren't standing in a circle when this cast finishes, you'll be stunned for several seconds and get a Volen stack. From the next set of four books that will spawn in, two will be these wavy circles and the other two will be these black and purple circles. On the properties of tornadoes will launch you into the air in a pretty damaging move. To avoid this, you just need to have the heavy debuff to anchor you to the ground. So when this cast finishes, you will need to be standing in a black and purple AoE, which will give you the heavy debuff. If you aren't standing in a black and purple circle, you'll be hit with a Volen stack. On the properties of imps will change you into an imp or change you from an imp if you've already preemptively become one. If you're an imp, you'll have the extra debuff of lightning resistance down too. Directly after the imp cast is finished, the boss will target everyone with on the properties of 
Thunder 3, which is indicated by this purple marker over your head. If you are still an imp when you get hit with this, it will not only give you a Volan stack, but also give you down for the count for several seconds. The boss will move to one side of the arena and cast Check Out again. This will spawn a large book in the center of the arena and a behemoth will spawn out of it. The behemoth will begin to cast Ecliptic Meteor and spawn in several AoEs around the arena to avoid. It will also put proximity markers down, which everyone will need to get away from to reduce the damage. Those proximity markers will have a boulder crushed down onto those spots. You will need to get behind a boulder and out of the line of sight of the behemoth before the cast of Ecliptic Meteor is finished. If you don't, you will instantly die. After this move goes off, the boulders will disappear. Following this, the boss will only ever spawn in three books. One for each mechanic of Quakes, Imps, and Tornadoes. It will continuously repeat these mechanics until it has been defeated. Congratulations, you have beaten the Great Koopa Library again. My name is The Scrub. Thank you for watching.